All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the 81st whiskey review in Who Gives a Dram history. That's insane to me. Can't believe it, but we're here. Uh, if you're tuning in on YouTube, thanks for checking out the channel. Thank you for checking out my whiskey review here. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe. Uh, hit the bell notification down below, so that way you always get notified when I drop my videos, usually on a weekly basis. I actually haven't missed a week in a long time. So weekly basis, new whiskey review, give my thoughts on a different whiskey every single week. Um, for those listening on the podcast, on audio, thanks for, thanks for sticking around. Uh, to hear this whole podcast, um, unedited, unfiltered, everything like that, I've been recording the first part before the whiskey review, putting it all out on audio. So check out Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, wherever you listen to your to your podcast, check out Who Gives a Dram. You can hear the beginning part of the episode where we kind of just catch up with each other, see what happened during the week. We kind of just catch up and, and see how things are going and, and um, you know, see how the week is going and see what we did. And by we, I mean me talking into the camera by myself. Um, but we're here today, this week. I'm wearing my Top Gun shirt, even though I haven't seen Top Gun yet. Um, and we are going to be reviewing a kind of just a random bottle that I had bought, I don't know, a few months ago. I heard it was good. I, I kind of just bought it with no reasoning behind it, and I am damn sure glad I did because this is good stuff. Uh, this is a Blue Note Crossroads Straight Bourbon Whiskey finished with toasted French oak staves, uh, which is cool to me. Uh, so there's the bottle right there. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the lone traveler right there taking the crossroads, iconic in Memphis, um, the crossroads of Route 61 and, one, and Route 49. Um, kind of a cool concept here. Obviously, this is from BR Distillery, uh, produced and bottled by BR Distillery Company in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, which kind of is reminiscent as to why there is such a heavy kind of blues or even country aspect to this to this bottle. It's all etched in the glass of this kind of lone lone traveler with the guitar strapped to his back. I think that's pretty cool. It says crafted in Memphis, right? So from what I read, this is sourced by MGP using their 60% corn, 36% rye mash bill. That's just what people say. I, I can't find anywhere that confirms nor denies that. It does say crafted in Memphis and produced and bottled in Memphis. It doesn't say distilled. So I'm assuming, but it also doesn't say Indiana anywhere. So I'm kind of confused. But I'm assuming this is MGP juice. Uh, there's no age statement on here. Again, it's finished with toasted French oak staves. And if that sounds familiar, that's because it is familiar. A few weeks ago, if you remember, we reviewed Penelope Bourbon's The Architect. Finished again with French oak staves. So, and I really, really, really like the architect. Um, not as much as I like their light whiskey, but I really like the architect. Put that back. Um, big, big Penelope guy. Shout out to uh, Mike and Danny, by the way. Um, big Penelope guy. Loved the architect with the French oak staves, and I'm really looking forward to this. I'm a big toasted slash French oak guy. I think it gives a little bit of a unique twist on what is you know usually just a contemporary spirit kind of straightforward especially with bourbon and especially kind of with a higher rye content you kind of know what you're going to get um but the toasted the toasted french oak staves finished um you know finishing process really highlights i think a bit of a sweeter aspect um i know french oak popular with uh finishing uh wine in so um, this is just kind of a cool marriage between American oak finishing and French oak staves, uh, kind of like the marriage between Route 60 and Route 49, uh, 61 and 49. I'm sorry. Um, oh, there is something on the bottle. Let's read it. The Art Selling Company. This unique expression combines the unmistakable boldness of Blue Note bourbon with the sophistication of the finest toasted French oak curated from an artisan cooperage in Centre Val de Lore. France, obviously. <laughs> it 
Taste in every sip the unforgettable intersection of notes that embody the inherent spirit of the blues. The sound and movement of the blues were meant to break the rules. This is Blue Note Crossroads. Kind of a cool concept, man. I really I enjoy. Let's pour some in the glass. Let it let it sit. Cork pop. Not the best. I can pour a little bit more because I'm gonna have someone I'm cooking dinner after this. Um, by the way, so if you're young and poor like me, totally doesn't relate to whiskey. But if you're young and poor like me, here's where you want to make for dinner every single night, and you want to stay a little healthy. Pasta ground beef, seasoned ground beef, beef with Old Bay. You can put sauce in the pasta. I like to just put butter and salt. Not a lot. Chef's kiss. The other option, which is my go-to, uh, the OG, uh, I'm the OG of this meal, is bagged rice, ground turkey, mix it up, balsamic vinaigrette over the top. Thank me later. Um... That has nothing to do with whiskey, but I am gonna drink this whiskey once we're done. So um let let's uh let's talk about oh already spilling it, already haven't had whiskey in a few days, already drunk. Um let's talk about let's talk about the whiskey. Let's smell the whiskey, let's taste the whiskey, let's get into it. Um again, this is kind of uh, a bottle that I just found off the whim. MSRP's for around forty bucks, it's a hundred proof, no age statement. Um, 60% corn, 36% uh, rye MGP blend. The rest is malted barley. I'm not sure what the percentage is off the top of my head. Can't do math on the spot. Um, this should be interesting. I have enjoyed this. I sipped this with my brother uh, one of the first nights I got it, and we were both pleasantly surprised. So I'm hoping I stay that way. $40 is a is a loaded is a loaded category within the bourbon game. Lots of good choices for that price. So let's see if this holds up. We'll uh, go through the nose. We'll go through the palate. I know a lot of people do reviews on this. I'm going to try not to keep it. I'm going to try to keep it not boring and not just. Oh, wow. That's... <laughs> that smells really good. The first thing that jumps out to me on the nose. Bes- well, Okay. Okay, it smells young, right? So I get a fruity note, like right there. As soon as you, as soon as you inhale, it's fruit. But then you let it marinate inside your nostrils a little bit, and with me, my nostrils are a little cleared up, right? Because I have the uh, manscaped lawnmower that you put up your nose to trim your nose hairs. So I do that because I'm old. I'm 25, almost 26. So I got to worry about all that stuff and like social security. I'm getting up there in age. Um, I can really smell this well. So the first thing that was the point of that of that little off uh, that little that little tangent right there. That was because I can smell this real well. And right off the bat, it's green apple, like bright, bright, almost sour green apple. A little tannic, a little tannic, but then you you let it marinate for a second in your nostrils, and it's it's very toasted, roasted marshmallow. I'm getting kind of like s'mores, but that might be good because I had s'mores this weekend. A little bit of a mintiness, not really like any, more of like a honey than a, than like a vanilla. And obviously the oak is present. This is a really, really, and I don't say this a lot. I don't say this a lot. This is a really yummy nose. (laughs) I'm never going to say that again. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, Nose is great, man. Nose is good. It's it's very inviting. Kind of surprised on like the initial burst of fruit right there. Because, again, usually with French oak staves, I'm getting more of like a darker vanilla creme brulee type of vibe to it. This has that marshmallowiness, vanilla-ness to it, but it's very almost spicy fruit forward. Almost like a spicy green like spice drop. 
but then it does have those very familiar scents of vanilla. It's definitely got the oak present in there, that that marshmallow kind of thicker, viscous vanilla is in there as well. Lots of things going on, really good nose. For rating this just on the nose, it's it's up there. A little bit of a uh, little bit more after letting like my mouth open and smell it deeper, bit more wood, bit more wood on it, which I'm not mad about by the way. Just very standard nose. I mean, it's kind of exactly what you would expect. I think besides that initial fruit that I get, it's which, again, that might be because it's it's probably kind of a young bourbon. If I had to guess, it's straight bourbon whiskey, so it's at least two years. But it's it, it's probably pretty young. If I had to guess, it's anywhere between three to five years old, maybe more towards five years old. But which isn't necessarily young, but it just kind of smells like it's not fully formed yet. Again. Nothing wrong with that at all. Just very bright, a little bit more brighter than I thought it was going to be. So let's drink. Let's drink. Um, thank you again for joining the show. Hopefully you're drinking along with me. We're doing some Blue Note Crossroads straight bourbon whiskey. Episode 81, who gives a dram? Oh, that was good. Cheers. weird sorry for all that dead space if you're listening to this um that kind of put my mind through a blender very fruity very appley i'm kind of perplexed and i don't know if even i don't know if it's in a good way or not so the nose again it's 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 got that apple scent like it's very apple forward. It's like right off the bat, green apple, like a spicy green apple spice drop. Okay, a little bit more on the second sip after letting it swish around. You do get that more classic vanilla marshmallow. <laughs> It's tough to describe. I know I've been saying. I feel like I've been saying marshmallow a lot. It's tough to describe that because I don't mean just like taking a marshmallow and biting. I mean like, like almost getting like a flame gun and like roasting it a little bit and then letting it harden, and then like taking that texture and that taste. That rather than just a regular marshmallow, it's got to be like a little bit melted to really get the vanilla out of it. But it's a different type of vanilla. Um, almost like a fluff, you know? But I, I'm very surprised of how fruity this is, is, is kind of where I'm at in my experience right now. I, I, I don't remember it being, being so green apple forward. It almost reminds me of like a, like a very like a like a single malt almost it doesn't taste like a like a scotch or irish but i i'm gonna be honest if someone gave this to me and said this is a very unique single malt irish whiskey i would not put it past it because this is very green apple forward and i always get green apple on irish whiskey the finish isn't very good it's very tannic. It's very sour. It's not very long. <clears throat> Let me get a sip of water real quick. I really want to like this, bro. Really want to like this. Let me try it again. A little chocolate on there too. Chocolate vanilla. 
Best of both worlds. Just so aptly. Not a lot of oak on the palette, to be honest. <clears throat> I guess I'm just not getting the usual French oak stay flavors, and it's kind of freaking me out. Um, with the Architect, I really was getting that nice, dark vanilla note, like that dark creme brulee, glazed marshmallow, like that type of like very, very, like obviously it's so dick to say glazed marshmallow. That is so pretentious of me, but it's true. Uh, this is just, it just tastes young, I guess, is, is my, my issue with it. It's It's not bad, but I'd be curious to get like an age stated crossroads here i know blue i know blue note does age stated whiskeys i'd be curious to try those but i really like the french oak stay finish i'm a big fan of it uh makers has done it uh obviously penelope's done it blue note does it there's a lot of distilleries that do the french oak stay finish and i'm usually a fan of it this just doesn't remind me of one. It's also toasted as well, which again, you're you're really supposed to impart on those on those kind of uh, wholesome wholesome sweet flavors from that toast. Um a little bit of spice on the palate as well. I think it's like a cinnamony type of spice. I like it. It's just not this would be a bottle that I wouldn't mind finishing in like three or four days and then not getting it for another few months and then finding it again, like forgetting about it and then getting it again. And it's like, ah, I, I could use some of this. It's kind of like how I feel about like Russell's 10. I love Russell's 10. I haven't done it on the podcast yet, um, but I haven't had it in a few months because I finished it. It's crushable. I like it. It's just, it's not on my priority. I think I'm always going to keep a bottle of this on hand. I just don't know if I'm going to prioritize it now. Now that I'm actually tasting it and working through it, there's really not a whole lot of finish to it. There, There's some nice flavors, especially on the nose. The palate has some nice flavors as well. It just doesn't remind me of what I think toasted French oak tastes like. Now, I'm a dumbass, so I could be completely wrong, and this is exactly what it should taste like, but I'm just giving you my honest opinion. That's all I do, and that's all I will do. Just give you my honest opinion on what I think about these whiskeys. And I hope that's why you guys watch. Now, it is so hot in my studio right now, and I'm sweating. But we're going to truck on, because I want to take one more sip before I give this an actual review. It's not bad. <clears throat> definitely, definitely, definitely hitting with all its proof, 100%. I just don't know, like, ah, at $40, there's just a lot of good value. I've been on a huge wild turkey rare breed kick recently, and I will review that soon on the podcast as well. I just, for 40 bucks, there are so many good options out there. It's like, would I go out of my way to pick this up? <clears throat> now, I think I would. I really do. I really do think I would probably go out of my way to pick this up. Um, I, would, I feel like I want to have this on hand. I want to try some more Blue Note stuff as well. So Blue Note, if you're listening to this and you want me to review more whiskey, feel free to send it my way. I will gladly review it, but... I'm thinking, you know, the nose was, was pretty good. The palate didn't live up to the nose. The finish just wasn't my my cup of tea. Um, great price point, widely available, cool concept, cool bottle. From what I can tell, the the guys seem cool. I know they were, they were on Barrel Proof Baseball's podcast with Tony, who's a very good friend of mine. A handsome, handsome gentleman. I actually just talked texted him today I was talking to Tony today Tony was on my podcast was on who gives a dream go check him out if you want but I'm thinking I'm gonna give this <clears throat> like an 8.5 round it off 8.5 this is good I would buy it again I'd recommend you the viewer to, to definitely pick up this bottle if you can find it for around 40 bucks which you should be able to 
it's a different expression. It's a bit of a anomaly. It's it's different, but it's not bad. I give this a few extra years in a bottle, or I'm sorry, give this a few extra years in a barrel, and I think it's greatly improving the product. But with what we're getting here, that's in this bottle, eight point five it is a solid score. It's not. It's not below that. I really. Now, does this taste better than Weller Single Barrel? Absolutely not. Weller Single Barrel is delicious. But the problem is that price plays a point into it. And the reason I bring up Weller Single Barrel is because that was last week's. I think I gave it an 8.2 or an 8.3. This is not hold a candle to Weller Single Barrel in terms of taste. But it's good enough where it can be comparative to it, and it's also widely available, and it's also super easy to find and for a good price. So... That plays a big part in my score because, like, if you can't find the the whiskey, there's no point of me giving it a good score. Pappy Twenty Three might be great, but when are you gonna find it? That's that's my that's my thing with it. I wanna I wanna review bourbons and and give you guys suggestions on bottles you can actually friggin' find. Now, will I review Pappy Twenty Three one of these days, and will I be blown away? Most likely, but. When it comes to an actual score, the who gives a dram stamp of approval is a whole different story. I want to, I, I want, that's why Mellow Corn is great. 12 bucks and it tastes good. What more can you ask for? Evan Williams Bottle and Bond, again. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, this is an 8.5. Not disappointed, also not the happiest. It's good. It's good stuff. Um, shout out to Blue Note, doing their thing cool marketing promotional bottle they got they've got going on uh, i'm excited to try more blue note product uh, but until then that's going to do it uh this week on the podcast you guys it, again if you're watching on youtube thank you make sure you subscribe below i've got a whole bunch of full episodes of who gives the dram available i'm starting to just break these down into the whiskey reviews so follow along the journey with me if you want to listen to the full, unedited, unfiltered podcast, only available on audio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, go make sure you check out. It's like an extra 15 or 20 minutes on this episode, um, along with you're able to listen to it. Uh, Apple Podcasts, if you wouldn't mind, leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. That means the world. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment and hit the bell notifications. Uh, my Instagram is who gives a dram. If you want to buy some of my merch, I do have a few things available. Click the link in my Instagram bio. You can find it there. Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok are all the same. Who gives a dram? Check out my other podcast, Bourbon with Friends. We upload uh, upload one to two podcasts a week. Uh, Bourbon with Friends on every platform. BWF Podcast on Instagram. Um, but just type in Bourbon with Friends wherever you listen to your podcasts, uh, your favorite podcast. You can find us there as well. Uh, Great Vine Media, who presents this podcast. Make sure you check us out over there, www.thegreatvinemedia.com, for some more content. And that's it this week. So thanks again, you guys, for checking out the show. I really appreciate you guys. And until next week, always remember, whiskey's the water of life, so let's start living.